I'm Brad Nickerson and this is We've Got Issues. Thank you for joining us today. We've Got Issues is a nonpartisan, citizen-based forum where we look at issues that are of interest to the Tri-Cities. First, I'd like to thank the Tri-Cities Community TV for making this program possible. Before we get started with today's interview, I'd like to acknowledge that this program is taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded lands of the Coquitlam First Nations. We thank the Coquitlam people who continue to take care of these lands and all that is above and below. Today we're talking to Barbara Yonker. Have I got that right? Yes. Good. Who is um, running in this election for a seat on Port Moody's Council. Yes. All right. Barbara. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. Great. So the very first thing I want to ask you about is I want to know a little bit about your background. I understand that you've been on council before. Yes. So, uh, but I'd like to know more than that. I'd like to know like what your past is. What like I want to know the dark secrets of your past, Barbara. I don't no. really have any, but no. okay. <laughs> okay, good. That's a good answer. Um, what I want to know is um, I just want to know what your experience is prior to council. Sure. So uh, me and my husband have lived here for 33 years in Port Moody in Glen Eyre neighborhood, okay. raised our two children there. I served from 2014 to 2018 on city council. Okay. That's and two terms? Just one term. It's one, four one years. Term. They, oh, they do right. four okay. years now. My they math's did not three. fabulous. <laughs> now they do four. And prior to that, um, I often did um, volunteer work through for you know, um, cancer for diabetes, different ones. Okay. And then I also, when the children are growing up, did PAC. I belong to the Glen Eyre Community Association. So volunteer work was always part of my life. Great. And then when the opportunity came to run for city council, I the first time I ran, I wasn't successful, but the second time I ran, I was. I think what I bring to council is, my background is um, I started with uh, BC Hydro as an employee and then moved from there over to actually being a union representative. Okay. So in that role, you learn to build consensus, you learn to negotiate. You also, um, respectful workplace is one of the very big components mm -hmm. of that. So you learn to work with people. So of course, union employer, we don't always agree, right? Mm -hmm. But you have a respectful dialogue where you present your point of view. Sometimes you can reach compromises, sometimes you can't, but that doesn't mean you dislike the person, yeah. right? These are these are the rules and that's what I can bring and did bring to the council table previously. Right. I listen to both sides. I will make a thoughtful decision on whatever's there, but I am always going to respect someone else's opinion. Mm -hmm. I had a good working relationship with city staff, which I also think is very important for people to respect staff mm -hmm. as as well as their council parts. So on council when I was there, I got along well with all my, my colleagues, so I can bring that to the table. And then I think my experience in work with um, negotiations, consensus building, respectful, I think that brings a lot to the table as well. And, you know, it was something that I, I enjoyed doing and enjoyed listening and working with the residents of Port Moody, hearing what they wanted, what do they want to see? Um, you know, how do they want to see Port Moody grow? Mm -hmm. Because we will grow, but we want to do it in a way that sort of respects our heritage and, you know, the small town feel that everybody loves about Port Moody. To try to maintain that. Yes. Yeah. So um, it's it, it's funny that we got into this this part of our funny to me that we got into this part of our conversation right at the beginning, which is speaking about how um, speaking about respectful relationships and and uh, I like what you've spoken about, which is all through that entire process because a community has to come together yes. on all parts to get along. I, I like that. Um, I, I'm sure that in that period of time when you weren't on council, you saw what what the council was like. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think it, 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 it's like that? And, 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 and this is, I, I recognize, I'm asking you a really tough question. Um, and it's not meant to be tough. I'm just really interested in that dynamics that happens because, you know, people in, in politics, we see everywhere in the politics right now, a real clash of sides. And somehow we need to cool that down, I think. Yeah, and I don't know what happens. We did not have that previously on council, so I'm not sure 
what the environment, like what happened, if it started, um, I don't know if it came from the mayor's chair. I, I don't know why um, it got so divisive mm -hmm. on, on council and I found it very um, hard to watch. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I think that all parties need to, they, they need to work together to actually be respectful. Like, I, I mean, you don't have to accept someone else's ideals, right? But that doesn't mean that you can dismiss them or that they're wrong or that they aren't contributing something to the conversation, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, I wasn't in the inner workings, so I don't know what happened yeah, yeah, in yeah. there to, to create it to the point where it just didn't seem fixable because it should have been fixable. I mean, my background is in areas where there are um, disrespectful work environments. Yeah. And then we bring the parties together and we mediate and we figure out how you actually are gonna go forward and work in a respectful environment. Yeah. So that is where I come from. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure why that couldn't Are there happened. facilities in cities to, um, are, is there a facility within a city to do exactly that, bring? You'd bring someone in, sure, you can bring someone in. You could, you'd bring somebody you, from you'd the outside. You'd bring an outside person in. You can't yeah. usually do it in-house because there's, yeah. it would be seen as a bias no matter what you did. You can't do it in-house, of course. Yeah. Even so, even with employers, I said, don't do in-house. Yeah. It has the perception of a bias, Yeah. and that's all you need. Right, so you would that's what you would encourage in yes. a situation like that. Yeah. Thank you for like like having this little discussion. It's, it can be a little bit uncomfortable, but in this little program that we've done, we've sort of focused on that. So I appreciate you having that conversation. But what we're here for, more importantly, and what I hope people will take for take from our conversation is what your agenda is. Where what what you why should why should people vote for you in this next election and reelect you? back to your position. What, where do you want to see the city go? So the reason I'm running is I feel that I can bring some leadership back to the council table. I can bring back more of a consensus building approach to um, what the choices and, and where we're going to go in the next four, 10 years. I mean, we are currently uh, redoing our OCP, so we will be getting a new direction from the residents. I really do think that if council works with the residents of Port Moody, that we can um, resolve most of the issues that we've got. People are concerned about growth. Well, we are going to have to grow. We know that. That's mandated through the provincial government. But where do we grow that doesn't create more traffic congestion? And how, how do we grow? So I think we need to look at our transit-oriented development areas. And we need to be building neighbourhoods, like complete little neighborhoods where people can have like commercial retail and not necessarily, you know, like there's the tall of a concrete wall of towers down in St. John's, not something that I could ever support. But you look at Newport Village, when you drive up to it, do you see concrete towers? They're placed in the back. And then we've got the beautiful residential and we've got all the commercial space so that people can live, work, play, do everything right in there. This is the type of development that we need to see. We need to have it so right at our transit station so that if people can't work right there in Port Moody, transit is an option. And we need to be talking with developers about, well, how are we going to actually encourage people to take that transit? Mm -hmm. So there's been options before that have done, well, we'll give them free um, transit passes for three months. I just recently read an article where they are um, going to do it for a year, but they're going to ask people if they can study because they want to find out how successful that is. Like, is that a tool that is actually successful and will get people using transit? Mm -hmm. And then what we need to do as well is make the city more connected through bicycle paths to walking so that it's safer for people and that they will be encouraged to get out of their cars and walk. So we have great success with Breweries Row, right? We have this wonderful destination. There isn't a lot of connectivity over the rail line. So we need to improve that. We need to have more connectivity over, over the rail line so that people can just walk over mm -hmm. instead of having, well, drive or do some other form. We did, in one summer, we had um, a bus that just did a loop from City Hall and came around St. John's and picked people up and dropped them down at Rocky Point to discourage cars. And it was quite successful. It was used quite well. So it's something that we could maybe look at bringing back in the summer months, but maybe having it paid for by the businesses as opposed to council, because we also 
need to be fiscally responsible as well is mm -hmm. where the money is going. So I feel like we have to make development that will not increase our traffic congestion. We know that a lot of the traffic coming through Port Moody is not ours. It's not residents. It's uh, coming through for Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam and farther out. So it is a regional issue. So I think we need to be able to be looking at the regional level and with the other municipalities and with TransLink as to how we can address some of this. The master transportation plan that Port Moody has has some ideas in there as to what we can do. So I'd like to see us get that implemented. We also have the economic development master plan, which also talks about creating neighborhoods, sustainable neighborhoods where you're going to put in the green space, you're going to put in commercial um, space, retail, like do we want to create like an arts hub? Because we are the city of the arts, so why are we not looking at promoting that piece, making that a destination for people to, to come to? If we have that connectivity over to Breweries Row, then people can come over easily and enjoy. We could have restaurants, artist studios. We've talked about having um, where they can have their studios on the bottom, residents on the top. So there are lots of opportunities that we can use to maybe create some unique, vibrant neighborhoods in Port Moody that will be a destination for people to come and supportable. Sure. Barbara, you, just a moment ago, though, you had mentioned um, I, and I'm just curious, I like what this might look like. You'd mention because I like the idea of walkable cities. I think that that's a brilliant thing for us as a nation mm -hmm. to be thinking about um, making community instead of having large boxes, having small community hubs that people can walk to and buy their groceries close by. But how do you how do you do that in an established neighborhood? Like how how are you going to develop that? So um, in our TOD areas, we don't... T TOD? Sorry, transit-oriented development okay. areas, yeah. sorry. That's all right. TODs. Um, we, we don't necessarily have any of, of that. Like Moody Center, we have our... Well, it is changing even now. There is, it is single-family homes, but there are townhouses and low-rise apartments going in there as well. And what we're hearing from those residents is that we want services mm -hmm. in those areas. So if we build into the transit-oriented development areas by the Evergreen SkyTrain station, these neighborhood hubs, which we could put in that area, we can build in either restaurant services or retail services, or as I said, like artist space, and then also give them more connectivity over into um, Rocky Point or the right. breweries. We talk about like anchor tenants and that, so mm -hmm. there's lots of, we have the fiber optic internet Right, so there's chances maybe for some media type of development mm -hmm. in there, but we we are not going to be, um, or we shouldn't be looking at putting in more office space. We have that in Sutterbrook, and what I'm hearing is that there is not as great a need, and we've seen through COVID more people working from home, so we might be better placed at putting in work share spaces and things like that, which are something that more people would be looking for. Right, right, okay. Um, so. In that process, I guess, in the process of densification, because that's what that was, right? It's a, it's, it it's is, but it seems to be a bad word right now in Port Moody, densification. Yeah, but I, it, I wish people wouldn't think I, that I, way because... We need it. Be, yeah, and I think people need to come to terms with the fact that Canada is a lifeboat nation. Yes. And with, you know, just in the past few weeks of when we filmed this, we've seen around the world, huge effects of climate change, and that's shifting people all over the world. Um, so, so densification is an alternative to urban sprawl. Right. And when we have urban sprawl, we start to see problems with wildlife. The interface between humans and nature right. ca is causing us problems. So densification, if it's done really well with with um, with developers, developers who are keeping people in mind can be done can be done well if it's very mindful of how it's done, and that's I think what we're talking about, yes, isn't it? We Not are. to put words in your mouth. No, or but I mean, we, we do have to work with the developers to create what we want to see in Port yeah. Moody, and yeah. part of working with developers is the you know the community amenity contributions yeah. that they have to make. Yeah. 
people want a bigger library. They want you, rec centers. Do you think that part of the problem with the the pro, the thing that makes the word densification ugly is that people like with all due respect to developers, um, people f have seen that it's not looking out for their own interests. It could be. I think what people are seeing is what's happening around us in our neighboring municipalities. So if you just drive down from Glen Eyre and you go towards Burnaby, so there's a lot of towers yes. and there's a lot of 30 or higher towers. Mm -hmm. You're seeing that type of development in Coquitlam and what the residents are saying is that's not what we want. Right. Not what I want either. Right. If we build correctly, we can't, towers are not bad as opposed to what you were speaking about as like the urban sprawl. Yeah. You can do a much tighter, like Newport Village, you can do a much smaller footprint, have the towers, but don't have them like out front. They're sort of in the back with the green and the park space and the commercial and retail and service industries surrounding it so that you can have that sort of hub to create like a vibrant city, which we don't have in Moody Centre at this time. Right. So there's something that more reflects what's already happening in Sutterbrook and, and Yeah, I mean, Sutterbrook, Newport we have lessons Village. to learn from that for, per the, for the pedestrian walkability in there. Okay. So I think, you know, Newport Village is, uh, I think, more walkable. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and, and I, I, I'd like to also talk about affordability, how, where, where you stand with regards to that and how you'll bring um, that, mindfully bring that subject to the table when you come. I think it's critical that we yeah. are building affordable units and yeah. affordable and adaptable units. I think that's the other piece that's often missed because mm -hmm. you can get people that have different needs. So you don't just want just affordable. We need affordable and adaptable units for people that have, you know, various needs. Like, uh, you know, if you have a, a wheelchair, your door has got to be wider. So we should be thinking of these things when we are looking at all types of development. But when we're looking at affordability, we need to absolutely be putting in affordable rentals, but also like um, make it affordable for people to buy. 50 Electronic Avenue did a rent to own. So they did a certain number of units for that, which mm -hmm. was very successful. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Was, so, that, was that a decision that came from council? It was it, the developer brought it. The developer brought yes, it. Yes, brought it to, okay. to the table. Um, All right. Yes. And so that is something that we've said, you know, we need to be mimicking that in other developments as well. So mm -hmm. we, we need both types because it Port Moody is expensive to live in, to buy, yeah. to rent, all of it, right? I'm, I'm going to circle back to something that you said that sort of stuck in my head. Um, you, you mentioned at one point... Um, when we make the when when the connections are made from St. John's over to say the the I'm not sure the name of the street where Brewery, Brewery Row street, is, yeah. um, you mentioned that maybe that's something that the the existing businesses should buy into or help pick up the cost of that. I was talking about the bus when I said oh the, the bus for, okay but right, that's okay right. I mean I okay. think. The connectivity, I mean, it could be something that they could look at. It could also come out of the community amenities contributions yeah. I, as well. I think the point that I was trying to make was, um, is this not something that council can ask of developers as they come to help pick that up? Yes. And where do you stand on that sort of thing? Like, cause, because I think developers are seen as being so well rewarded, part of the burden of making our cities extraordinarily extraordinary cities might come from them a little bit as well. Yes. Do you, do you feel that or am I, li no, I think am I a little crazy? No, that? You're, you're not crazy. And I think part of it is we do get the community amendi uh, uh, amenities, the contribution that they have to give, right? right? I mean, it could be waived, but why would we waive that? That is something that they need to be providing. But also we can ask for other things that we think would fit within the development. So if right. they are going to put a development in and it would make sense to create that pathway, to create that connectivity when the development is being built, then that's what we need to be asking them yeah. to do. And to make it green, to make it, you know, a, a place where people are going to enjoy walking. Yeah. I'm, I'm, as, I'm going to ask you a question as a citizen now, just as a citizen of a community. Okay. Speaking to a counselor. Okay. Okay. Um, in my mind, I remember back in the days of Peter Lougheed in Alberta, who, who created a huge fund from the oil companies for the benefit of 
of Albertans. Could that not happen with developers of cities? We, we have two sets of funding that they have to give and they right. do, so the, there's the DCC and the CAC funds. So some of it goes into an affordable housing reserve. Some of it can be used to expand park space. Some of it can be to bring other communities like rec centers and, and different things like that. So we have two avenues of collecting money from developers at this time. Already? Yes, to right. use. Could we create another? another fund? Certainly something we can look at. Does it make yeah. sense? Well, they're developing in our city, so sure, yes, it makes sense. I mean, the province isn't going to be doing it. We don't have oil reserves, like so. Right. They, yeah, 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 yeah. So. Yeah, you know. but you know, isn't it the BC government's responsibility a little bit of the housing issue? Yes. So couldn't they have a little bit of? Um, yes, I think that they need to be bringing that to the table and, as well and, with us. And couldn't you, as a as a representative of the people, speak to the government whenever you have that opportunity for something like that? Yes, and we yeah. do. Yeah. Do, yeah. Yeah. How about you? But where do you stand on something like that? For to bring in the the provincial government into helping with affordable housing. Yeah. I mean, we for, not just affordable housing. Gonna, we but, have that through the yeah. CMHC. Okay. A, a so I'm bit, just I'm just you know. sort of making stuff up here. Is what you're no, saying? No, no, I'm not. A, <laughs> that's all right. We just do make fun have of me. avenues for <laughs> yeah. the provincial government to come in and help with yeah. funding of affordable some mm. affordable housing. Mm. Is there other options that we should be looking at? Sure, we can petition the housing minister if we feel that there is something more that they should be doing mm -hmm. or, or supplying us with. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and I'm sorry I'm taking you on this long thing. L let's talk about any, what are, this, what are some of the other things that you think are important that, peop that you want to bring to the table um, on council? Okay, so I, I think, um, so the affordable housing is one of the, the bigger things. We've yeah. talked about the traffic congestion as to what we can do. We also have, the master transportation plan, which yeah. I think should be implemented. There are some things in there that could help with some of the traffic. We're, if we're going to develop, the roads aren't gonna grow. We're not gonna change that. So we, we need to look at the regional options. We need to also be the economic development. Like, so we need to be making ourselves attractive to bring in the businesses that will sort of create those hubs. So we have our natural scape like we have our parks and that, and then it's we have- It's a beautiful city. Yes, and we have the transportation. So we have the West Coast Express and we have, you know, the Evergreen Line. So, so we, we have lots have, of population. Yes, so we need to be going out and working with developers to get those types of tenants to come in to make, to give us an anchor tenant to create and then bring in the services that will support all that as well. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we've just lost a couple of landmark uh, restaurants in Port Moody. They, it was uh, Rosa's is just closed, which is very mm -hmm. sad, and Charlie's. So two long time um, restaurants are gone. Yeah. So we need to bring in others to, to fill in those spaces. Right. We need to be expanding our park space. We certainly learned that through COVID, that there were, is not enough green and park space and how important it is for people's mental health. So not just green space, but it has to be usable, green space, whether it's, we're just, you know, a little corner lot that's got trees planted for shade and benches, somewhere for community to, you know, get together and meet. We need to use our, you know, park acquisition strategy plan. So we need to look at that. Mm -hmm. And then of course, expand Rocky Point Park. If there's going to be any development down in that area, then we need to be looking to expanding our park because it is used, Considering how much it was used when I first came here 33 mm -hmm. years ago to now, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Well, I'm I'm from Port Coquitlam, mm -hmm. and yet I use Port or I use Rocky Point. My family has used Rocky Point for years. Yes, right. It is. It's a destination. Yes, and with and I I think I was there less than a week ago, and if I recall, it's like it is an oversubscribed park. Yes, it the parking is difficult at this point. And there are a lot of people there, which is great, which is what you want. It is what we want. But we're starting to get to the point where people are on top of each other. We Parks are, and, and I think we learned this from Balcara and the parking situation. Yes. So we. And that's why we need another way to get people to come to Rocky Point Park outside of their cars, because it mm -hmm. is limited parking, but we do need to expand it. So as we say, make it connected as far along as we can along yeah. the waterfront. And so, and so uh, how is that done? Like, um, is that petitioning 
BC Transit or or TransLink uh, for the yes to get a better bus service and that to, for people to come is absolutely through there again through the summer months because that's when it's busiest yeah there I mean you can go in the fall it's busy but it's not it's not the same mm -hmm. we had it running from uh, City Hall which is there's the rec parking lot there so it was people could drive there and then take the bus mm -hmm. and it would stop at certain places or there were stops along St. John so you you wouldn't get into that overcrowded Yeah, made a, a little bit more accessible. Yes. I, I see that we're starting to run out of time and I'm um, I'm worried that I haven't given you a chance to um, is there anything else that we should be talking about on your platform that people should know um, to consider when when it comes time to vote uh, I mean I would say I think I think we've covered a lot we've we've talked about economic development we've talked about the traffic congestion we have talked about development mm -hmm. we will need to develop it's 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 necessary to increase our population and and actually that's how we get economic development as well mm -hmm. we've talked about expanding park space including Rocky Point Park so those are our main I feel those are the main things that are coming up and then civility back at the council table and so those are your priorities yes Barbara this has been fabulous I really appreciate that you've come in and spoken to us and uh, I wish you all the best in this election thank you for good, having me good luck yeah. you're more than welcome this is we've got issues and brought to you by Tri-City Community TV thank you for watching